Sonic Universe Issue 26 We see Silver still being ganged up on and almost helpless against a bunch of Chaotix robots instead of just telekinetically grabbing all of them. He gets knocked down by Laser and eventually he's lucky enough to get saved by some people who have to come in and save a telekinetic hedgehog. The first robot seems to get defeated by an alternate Bark and Fiona, which is intriguing, and the robot Espio is polite enough to just sit there and wait while Antoine counts up to three in French and gets his language racistly dismissed by Rotor. Yeah, I hope it's okay with you that I'm just going to call these guys Antoine, Rotor, Bunny, and so on, because saying the alternate every single time is annoying to type out. And, well, it's revealed that they're actually the children of the counterparts of the characters. It, they have such bad Generation Z rocks that they look so much like the main characters anyways, and their names are stupid. Bunny, quote unquote, quote unquote Bunny, who seems to have the cyborg parts on parts of her arms instead, but not all of them so she doesn't look useful, tells her boyfriend the eye-patched bean that he has to hit the other three robots. Somehow I expected to believe a one-eyed person never misses his shots. Fortunately, Bunny is nice to Silver, helping him up. Bean tells their boss that they've got a survivor, and their boss is a more bitter-looking version of Lara Sue. Is she a time traveler too? And I hate all of these text blurbs around these characters. What stupid names, I'm gonna call them what I want, dammit. What kind of a name is Payback? You'd think that she would go by a different name out of rebelling against that awful name. And no one would trust her because of that name. Silver gets in trouble from calling Lara by her name, and Bark tells her not to hurt him, saying that he obviously knows her and they need to find out why first. Lara admits that he's right, as usual, and says that she wants to be called Jenny Ka. So is she the same Lara Sue whose father went mad with Chaos Energy and took over the world to Dark Legion? About time we saw a follow-up to that story then. Silver apologizes that he got excited and wasn't thinking, and he knows another version of her. Personally? I mean, I guess the kidness are supposed to live for a long time. Oh, Silver Mines has said he helped Lara Sue in the past to beat Perfect Chaos. For some reason, Antoine doesn't believe him and thinks he's delusional, but Jenica's John Rosalvi believes him. Silver has a hard time explaining exactly how far into the future he's from, probably having to do math, before saying that he's 170 years in the future from her, saying that Jenny looks the same age as Lara. As Jack's narration reveals that he's still spying on Silver from the beginning, so I guess he's only not killing him out of curiosity with where this will go, Silver asks what happened to a city that reminds him of Portal. He's told that this place, Necronopolis, used to be the capital of the Dark Legion's nation. Jenny refuses at first to call her father her father, and just explains that he's the guardian before her and took over Mobius with his chaos powers. As Silver uses psychokinesis to help out, Jenny explains that her mother and her were part of the initial resistance, they helped organize the Freedom Fighter army, and nearly took him down, but he took the emerald so no one could match his power, and the army was crushed, so only they remained. She explains as they all go inside the sewers, that Sonic was reduced to a core like everyone else. She asked if he saw how the robots dissolved into balls of light. She explains that those are cores, concentrated life forces that are used to create Enerjack's prelate warriors. What does prelate even mean? Was that word created by just complete random smacking on a keyboard? Why not just say robots? Why would he need life force cores instead of just making robots or roboticizing? Lara, I mean Jenny Ka, says that it's hard fighting old friends and family, and no matter what they do, Interjack just uses their cores again. They go into the base, and Jenny Ka explains that the reason she believed Silver about him being a time traveler was because when she time traveled into the past herself, she didn't get her facts straight and failed to change anything here. Silver's too ashamed to outright admit that he's made the same kinds of mistakes, and Jenica gets eager about her plan to stop Enerjack. She fortunately has the Sword of Acorns at hand, and when the time is right, she'll use it to siphon all of his power from him. Wouldn't it be nice if that could have been used on Ixis right about now? It really makes me wish the heroes could just go to another dimension, borrow their Sword of Acorns, and do that. I never got the indication that the Sword of Acorns could siphon people's powers, but then again, this is an alternate dimension after all. And, oh, I guess the reason she refuses to go by Lair Suna is because she wants to distance herself from her father more? But the soup part is from her mother. She doesn't hate her mother. Throda says they can use the core power to turn the cores back into Mobians. Oh, thank goodness, it really isn't that dark then. This place may not be totally depressingly hopeless after all. Janica confirms my belief that her old name just reminds her of her father. Wouldn't it remind her of her mother, since only her mother raised her with that name? 
She never even knew her father until the time traveling stuff. Interject finally decides to reveal himself with telepathy, saying that he's always known where they were as he stares into a crystal ball. So he only just now decides to attack their base when he always knew where it was? How does that make sense? Silver tells everyone to link hands so that he can get them out of there. Silver says that while he can fly them out, he doesn't think he can do anything about the stuff falling on them at the same time. I guess he really has a limit to his telekinesis for some reason, and he's only so powerful. Demo, being his descendant in this universe, clears the way with an explosion. What kind of a name is that? Enerjack grabs all the telekinesis himself, causing destruction, and says that while the Freedom Fighters were an amusing distraction, which is probably why he stupidly kept them alive like a James Bond villain, the Time Traveler has made their entertainment value obsolete. Silver has a determination to have his own telekinesis overpower Freaktik Enerjacks and sends everyone to the floor carefully. Enerjack says that Gun had him outnumbered by the hundreds and now their fleets are at the bottom of the sea. He forgets that he's facing people with magical powers while Gun were made up of mortals. He for some reason wants to humor them with a fair fight, so he puts some life cores into robots forcing their old friends to fight them. And unfortunately for Janet Cat, he feels that her mother was turned into a core too. At least, her being being in a core instead of her literally being roboticized is less dark because it means that if the entire body is destroyed, her mother is still going to be alive because she's alive as a core. She's naturally outraged at this and tells Silver to leave her to her and help the others. Silver destroys the building that Enerjack's standing on top of and Enerjack sends him away with a force push calling it out as pointless. This issue is by Ian Flynn and reveals to my surprise that things might not be hopeless for this future after all since the life forces stolen from people are put into robots and then can be reused again and there's actually hope of everyone getting their life forces back. That's a pleasant surprise, I wasn't expecting that. And I like seeing alternate freedom fighters here, with Jenny Ka making her grand return, going from a naive teenage girl to a bitter hardened warrior who hates her old name for some reason. It's really interesting the differences in this in this future freedom fighter group. They have a Fiona, who the art insists on drawing her smirking all the time, generically, and they have Bean and Bark be a part of it, with Bean not being insane, and they have Rotor unfortunately being a jerk who's totally dismissive of Antoine's language, even though they're friends. I guess these are all supposed to be the future descendants of the Freedom Fighters of this dimension that would have the same names as the main characters. Since they have different stupid names themselves, and Enerjack recognizes Jenny Ka as his daughter and as her mother's life core. I'm not sure how Bean got to have children though, I guess he's not insane in this universe. The story ends off with Enerjack fighting all of the heroes. It's pretty exciting. <laughs>